Glasgow, Scots, Glesca Les, Scottish Gaelic, Glachu KL, as, Shu, is the most populous city in Scotland, and the third most populous city in the United Kingdom, as of the 2017 estimated city population of 621,020. Historically part of Lanarkshire, the city now forms the Glasgow City Council area, one of the 32 council areas of Scotland. The local authority is Glasgow City Council. Glasgow is situated on the River Clyde in the country's west central lowlands. Inhabitants of the city are referred to as Glaswegians or Weegees. It is the fifth most visited city in the UK. Glasgow is also known for the Glasgow Patter, a distinct dialect of the Scots language that is noted for being difficult to understand by those from outside the city. Glasgow grew from a small rural settlement on the River Clyde to become the largest seaport in Scotland, and tenth largest by tonnage in Britain. Expanding from the medieval bishopric and royal borough, and the later establishment of the University of Glasgow in the 15th century, it became a major centre of the Scottish Enlightenment in the 18th century. From the 18th century onwards, the city also grew as one of Great Britain's main hubs of transatlantic trade with North America and the West Indies. With the onset of the Industrial Revolution, the population and economy of Glasgow and the surrounding region expanded rapidly to become one of the world's preeminent centres of chemicals, textiles and engineering, most notably in the shipbuilding and marine engineering industry, which produced many innovative and famous vessels. Glasgow was the second city of the British Empire." For much of the Victorian era and Edwardian period, although many cities argue the title was theirs, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Glasgow's population grew rapidly, reaching a peak of 1,127,825 people in 1938. Comprehensive urban renewal projects in the 1960s, resulting in large-scale relocation of people to designated new towns, such as Cumbernauld, Livingston, East Kilbride and peripheral suburbs, followed by successive boundary changes, reduced the population of the City of Glasgow Council area to an estimated 615,070, with 1,209,143 people living in the Greater Glasgow Urban Area. The wider metropolitan area is home to over 1,800,000 people, equating to around 33% of Scotland's population. The city has one of the highest densities of any locality in Scotland at 4,023 per square kilometres. Glasgow hosted the 2014 Commonwealth Games and the first European Championships in 2018, and is also well known in the sporting world for football particularly the old firm rivalry between Celtic and Rangers, rugby, athletics, tennis, golf and swimming. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The origin of the name Glasgow is disputed. It is common to derive the toponym from the older Cumbric glass cow or a Middle Gaelic cognate, which would have meant Green Basin or Green Valley. The settlement probably had an earlier Cumbric name, Cathours. The modern name appears for the first time in the Gaelic period 1116, as Glasgow. It is also recorded that the King of Strathclyde, Ritterch Hale, welcomed St. Kentigern also known as St. Mungo, and procured his consecration as bishop about 540. For some 13 years Kentigern laboured in the region, building his church at the Molendinar Burn where Glasgow Cathedral now stands, and making many converts. A large community developed around him and became known as Glasgow often glossed as the Deer Green or Deer Green Place. <laughs> History <laughs> <laughs> Origins and development The area around Glasgow has hosted communities for millennia, with the River Clyde providing a natural location for fishing. The Romans later built outposts in the area and, to keep Roman Britannia separate from the Celtic and Pictish Caledonia, constructed the Antonin Wall. Items from the wall like altars from Roman forts like Balmaldi can be found at the Hunterian Museum today. Glasgow itself was reputed to have been founded by the Christian missionary Saint Mungo in the 6th century. He established a church on the Molendinar Burn, where the present Glasgow Cathedral stands, and in the following years Glasgow became a religious centre. Glasgow grew over the following centuries. The Glasgow Fair reportedly began in the year 1190. 
The first bridge over the River Clyde at Glasgow was recorded from around 1285, giving its name to the Brigay area of the city, forming the main north-south route over the river via Glasgow Cross. The founding of the University of Glasgow in 1451 and elevation of the bishopric to become the Archdiocese of Glasgow in 1492 increased the town's religious and educational status and landed wealth. Its early trade was in agriculture, brewing and fishing, with cured salmon and herring being exported to Europe and the Mediterranean. Following the European Protestant Reformation and with the encouragement of the Convention of Royal Boroughs, the 14 incorporated trade crafts federated as the Trades House in 1605 to match the power and influence in the town council of the earlier merchants' guilds who established their merchants' house in the same year. Glasgow was subsequently raised to the status of Royal Borough in 1611. Glasgow's substantial fortunes came from international trade, manufacturing and invention, starting in the 17th century with sugar, followed by tobacco, and then cotton and linen, products of the Atlantic Triangular slave trade. Daniel Defoe visited the city in the early 18th century and famously opined in his book A Tour Throw the whole island of Great Britain, that Glasgow was the cleanest and beautifulest, and best-built city in Britain, London excepted. At that time the city's population was about 12,000, and the city was yet to undergo the massive expansionary changes to its economy and urban fabric, brought about by the Scottish Enlightenment and Industrial Revolution. Trading port After the Acts of Union in 1707, Scotland gained further access to the vast markets of the new British Empire, and Glasgow became prominent as a hub of international trade to and from the Americas, especially in sugar, tobacco, cotton, and manufactured goods. The city's tobacco lords created a deep water port at Port Glasgow on the Firth of Clyde, as the river within the city itself was then too shallow. By the late 18th century more than half of the British tobacco trade was concentrated on Glasgow's River Clyde, with over £47 million of tobacco being imported each year at its peak. At the time, Glasgow held a commercial importance as the city participated in the trade of sugar, tobacco and later cotton. Industrialisation The opening of the Monkland Canal and basin linking to the Forth and Clyde Canal at Port Dundas in 1795, facilitated access to the extensive iron ore and coal mines in Lanarkshire. After extensive river engineering projects to dredge and deepen the River Clyde as far as Glasgow, shipbuilding became a major industry on the upper stretches of the river, pioneered by industrialists such as Robert Napier, John Elder, George Thompson, Sir William Pierce and Sir Alfred Yarrow. The River Clyde also became an important source of inspiration for artists, such as John Atkinson Grimshaw, John Knox, James Kay, Sir Muirhead Bone, Robert Eddy, Stanley Spencer and L. S. Lowry, willing to depict the new industrial era and the modern world. Glasgow's population had surpassed that of Edinburgh by 1821. The development of civic institutions included the City of Glasgow Police in 1800, one of the first municipal police forces in the world. Despite the crisis caused by the city of Glasgow Bank's collapse in 1878, growth continued and by the end of the 19th century it was one of the cities known as the second city of the empire, and was producing more than half Britain's tonnage of shipping and a quarter of all locomotives in the world. In addition to its pre-eminence in shipbuilding, engineering, industrial machinery, bridge building, chemicals, explosives, coal and oil industries it developed as a major centre in textiles, garment making, carpet manufacturing, leather processing, furniture making, pottery, food, drink and cigarette making, printing and publishing. Shipping, banking, insurance and professional services expanded at the same time, Glasgow became one of the first cities in Europe to reach a population of one million. The city's new trades and sciences attracted new residents from across the lowlands and the highlands of Scotland, from Ireland and other parts of Britain, and from continental Europe. During this period, the construction of many of the city's greatest architectural masterpieces and most ambitious civil engineering projects, such as the Milngavie Water Treatment Works, Glasgow Subway, Glasgow Corporation Tramways, City Chambers, Mitchell Library, and Kelvingrove Art Gallery and Museum, were being funded by its wealth. 
The city also held a series of international exhibitions at Kelvin Grove Park, in 1888, 1901 and 1911, with Britain's last major international exhibition, the Empire Exhibition, being subsequently held in 1938 at Bella Houston Park, which drew 13 million visitors. The 20th century witnessed both decline and renewal in the city. After World War I, the city suffered from the impact of the post-World War I recession and from the later Great Depression. This also led to a rise of radical socialism and the Red Clydeside movement. The city had recovered by the outbreak of World War II and grew through the post-war boom that lasted through the 1950s. By the 1960s, growth of industry in countries like Japan and West Germany, weakened the once preeminent position of many of the city's industries. As a result of this, Glasgow entered a lengthy period of relative economic decline and rapid deindustrialization, leading to high unemployment, urban decay, population decline, welfare dependency and poor health for the city's inhabitants. There were active attempts at regeneration of the city, when the Glasgow Corporation published its controversial Bruce Report, which set out a comprehensive series of initiatives aimed at turning round the decline of the city. The report led to a huge and radical program of rebuilding and regeneration efforts that started in the mid-1950s and lasted into the late 1970s. This involved the mass demolition of the city's infamous slums and their replacement with large suburban housing estates and tower blocks. The city invested heavily in roads infrastructure, with an extensive system of arterial roads and motorways that bisected the central area. There are also accusations that the Scottish office had deliberately attempted to undermine Glasgow's economic and political influence in post-war Scotland by diverting inward investment in new industries to other regions during the Silicon Glen boom and creating the new towns of Cumbernauld, Glenrothes, Irvine, Livingston and East Kilbride, dispersed across the Scottish lowlands to have the city's population base. By the late 1980s, there had been a significant resurgence in Glasgow's economic fortunes. The Glasgow's Miles Better campaign, launched in 1983, an opening of the Burrell Collection in 1983 and Scottish Exhibition and Conference Centre in 1985 facilitated Glasgow's new role as a European centre for business services and finance and promoted an increase in tourism and inward investment. The latter continues to be bolstered by the legacy of the city's Glasgow Garden Festival in 1988, its status as European City of Culture in 1990, and concerted attempts to diversify the city's economy. However, it is the industrial heritage that serves as key tourism enabler. Wider economic revival has persisted and the ongoing regeneration of inner city areas, including the large-scale Clyde waterfront regeneration, has led to more affluent people moving back to live in the centre of Glasgow, fueling allegations of gentrification. In 2008, the city was listed by Lonely Planet as one of the world's top ten tourist cities. Despite Glasgow's economic renaissance, the east end of the city remains the focus of social deprivation. A Glasgow Economic Audit report published in 2007 stated that the gap between prosperous and deprived areas of the city is widening. In 2006, 47% of Glasgow's population lived in the most deprived 15% of areas in Scotland, while the Centre for Social Justice reported 29.4% of the city's working age residents to be economically inactive. Although marginally behind the UK average, Glasgow still has a higher employment rate than Birmingham, Liverpool, and Manchester. In 2008, the city was ranked at 43 for personal safety in the Mercer Index of top 50 safest cities in the world. The Mercer report was specifically looking at quality of living, yet by 2011, within Glasgow, certain areas were still failing to meet the Scottish air quality objective levels for nitrogen dioxide (NO2) and particulate matter (PM10). Topic. Sanitation With the population growing, the first scheme to provide a public water supply was by the Glasgow Company in 1806. A second company was formed in 1812, and the two merged in 1838, but there was some dissatisfaction with the quality of the water supplied. The Gorbals Gravitation Water Company began supplying water to residents living to the south of the River Clyde in 1846, obtained from reservoirs, which gave 75,000 people a constant water supply, but others were not so fortunate, and some 4,000 died in an outbreak of cholera in 1848–1849. 
This led to the development of the Glasgow Corporation Water Works, with a project to raise the level of Loch Katrine and to convey clean water by gravity along a 26-mile aqueduct to a holding reservoir at Milngavie, and then by pipes into the city. The project cost £980,000 and was opened by Queen Victoria in 1859. The engineer for the project was John Frederick Bateman, while James Morris Gale became the resident engineer for the city section of the project, and subsequently became engineer in chief for Glasgow Water Commissioners. He oversaw several improvements during his tenure, including a second aqueduct and further raising of water levels in Loch Katrine. Additional supplies were provided by Loch Arklet in 1902, by impounding the water and creating a tunnel to allow water to flow into Loch Katrine. A similar scheme to create a reservoir in Glen Finglas was authorized in 1903, but was deferred, and was not completed until 1965. Following the 2002 Glasgow floods, the waterborne parasite Cryptosporidium was found in the reservoir at Milngavie, and so the new Milngavie Water Treatment Works was built. It was opened by Queen Elizabeth in 2007, and won the 2007 Utility Industry Achievement Award, having been completed ahead of its time schedule and for £10 million below its budgeted cost. Good health requires both clean water and effective removal of sewage. The Caledonian Railway rebuilt many of the sewers, as part of a deal to allow them to tunnel under the city, and sewage treatment works were opened at Dalmarnock in 1894, Dalmuir in 1904 and Shieldhall in 1910. The works experimented to find better ways to treat sewage, and a number of experimental filters were constructed, until a full activated sludge plant was built between 1962 and 1968 at a cost of £4 million. Treated sludge was dumped at sea, and Glasgow Corporation owned six sludge ships between 1904 and 1998, when the EU Urban Waste Water Treatment Directive ended the practice. The sewerage infrastructure was improved significantly in 2017, with the completion of a tunnel 3.1 miles kilometers long, which provides 20 million imperial gallons 90 megaliters of storm water storage. It will reduce the risk of flooding and the likelihood that sewage will overflow into the Clyde during storms. Since 2002, clean water provision and sewerage have been the responsibility of Scottish Water. Heraldry The coat of arms of the city of Glasgow was granted to the Royal Borough by the Lord Lyon on 25 October 1866. It incorporates a number of symbols and emblems associated with the life of Glasgow's patron saint, Mungo, which had been used on official seals prior to that date. The emblems represent miracles supposed to have been performed by Mungo and are listed in the traditional rhyme. Here's the bird that never flew. Here's the tree that never grew. Here's the bell that never rang. Here's the fish that never swast. Mungo is also said to have preached a sermon containing the words Lord, let Glasgow flourish by the preaching of the word and the praising of thy name. This was abbreviated to let Glasgow flourish and adopted as the city's motto. In 1450, John Stuart, the first Lord Provost of Glasgow, left an endowment so that a St. Mungo's Bell could be made and told throughout the city so that the citizens would pray for his soul. A new bell was purchased by the magistrates in 1641 and that bell is still on display in the People's Palace Museum, near Glasgow Green. The supporters are two salmon-bearing rings, and the crest is a half-length figure of St. Mungo. He wears a bishop's mitre and liturgical vestments and has his hand raised in the act of benediction. The original 1866 grant placed the crest atop a helm, but this was removed in subsequent grants. The current version 1996 has a gold mural crown between the shield and the crest. This form of coronet, resembling an embattled city wall, was allowed to the four area councils with city status. The arms were rematriculated by the City of Glasgow District Council on 6 February 1975, and by the present area council on 25 March 1996. The only change made on each occasion was in the type of coronet over the arms. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Government and Politics. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Local Government. 
Although Glasgow Corporation had been a pioneer in the municipal socialist movement from the late 19th century, since the representation of the People Act 1918, Glasgow increasingly supported left-wing ideas and politics at a national level. The city council was controlled by the Labour Party for over 30 years, since the decline of the progressives. Since 2007, when local government elections in Scotland began to use the single transferable vote rather than the first-past-the-post system, the dominance of the Labour Party within the city started to decline. As a result of the 2017 UK local elections, the SNP was able to form a minority administration ending Labour's 37 years of uninterrupted control. In the aftermath of the Russian Revolution of 1917 and the German Revolution of 1918–19, the city's frequent strikes and militant organizations caused serious alarm at Westminster, with one uprising in January 1919 prompting the Liberal Prime Minister, David Lloyd George, to deploy 10,000 soldiers and tanks on the city's streets. A huge demonstration in the city's George Square on 31 January ended in violence after the Riot Act was read. Industrial action at the shipyards gave rise to the Red Clydeside epithet. During the 1930s, Glasgow was the main base of the Independent Labour Party. Towards the end of the 20th century, it became a centre of the struggle against the poll tax, which was introduced in Scotland a whole year before the rest of the United Kingdom and also served as the main base of the Scottish Socialist Party, another left wing political party in Scotland. The city has not had a Conservative MP since the 1982 Hillhead by-election, when the SDP took the seat, which was in Glasgow's most affluent area. The fortunes of the Conservative Party continued to decline into the 21st century, winning only one of the 79 councillors on Glasgow City Council in 2012, despite having been the controlling party as the progressives from 1969 to 1972 when Sir Donald Little was the last non-Labour Lord Provost. Glasgow is represented in both the House of Commons in London, and the Scottish Parliament in Holyrood, Edinburgh. At Westminster, it is represented by seven members of Parliament MPs, all elected at least once every five years to represent individual constituencies, using the first-past-the-post system of voting. In Holyrood, Glasgow is represented by 16 MSPs, of whom nine are elected to represent individual constituencies once every four years using first past the post, and seven are elected as additional regional members, by proportional representation. Since the Scottish Parliament election, 2016, Glasgow is represented at Holyrood by Nine Scottish National Party MSPs, four Labour MSPs, two Conservative MSPs and one Scottish Green, MSP. In the European Parliament, the city forms part of the Scotland constituency, which elects six members of the European Parliament. Topic. Central government Since Glasgow is covered and operates under two separate central governments, the devolved Scottish Parliament and UK government, they determine various matters that Glasgow City Council is not responsible for. Topic. Scottish Parliament The Glasgow Electoral Region of the Scottish Parliament covers the Glasgow City Council area, the Rutherglen area of the South Lanarkshire and a small eastern portion of Renfrewshire. It elects nine of the Parliament's 73 first-past-the-post constituency members and seven of the 56 additional members. Both kinds of member are known as members of the Scottish Parliament MSPs. The system of election is designed to produce a form of proportional representation. The first past the post seats were created in 1999 with the names and boundaries of then existing Westminster House of Commons constituencies. In 2005, the number of Westminster Members of Parliament MPs representing Scotland was cut to 59, with new constituencies being formed, while the existing number of MSPs was retained at Holyrood. In the 2011 Scottish Parliament election, the boundaries of the Glasgow region were redrawn. Currently, the nine Scottish Parliament constituencies in the Glasgow electoral region are Glasgow and Island, Glasgow Cathcart Glasgow Kelvin Glasgow Maryhill and Springburn Glasgow Pollock Glasgow Provan Glasgow Shettlestone Glasgow Southside Rutherglen at the 2016 Scottish Parliament election, all nine of these constituencies were won by Scottish National Party MSPs. 
On the regional vote, the Glasgow electoral region is represented by four Labour MSPs, two Conservative MSPs and one Green MSP. UK Westminster Parliament Following reform of constituencies of the House of Commons of the Parliament of the United Kingdom Westminster in 2005, which reduced the number of Scottish Members of Parliament MPs, the current Westminster constituencies representing Glasgow are Glasgow Central Glasgow East Glasgow North Glasgow North East Glasgow North West Glasgow South Glasgow South West Following the 2014 Scottish independence referendum, in which 53.49% of the electorate of Glasgow voted in favour of Scottish independence, the SNP won every constituency in the city at the 2015 general election, including a record-breaking 39.3% swing from Labour to SNP in the seat of Glasgow North East. Since the 2017 snap election, Glasgow is currently represented by six Scottish National Party MPs and one Labour MP. The Glasgow North East constituency which had a record 39.3% swing from Labour to SNP at the previous general election, was regained by Paul Sweeney of the Labour Party, who narrowly defeated sitting SNP MP Anne McLaughlin by 242 votes. Referendums <inaudible> 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 In the Scottish independence referendum, Glasgow voted «yes» by a margin of 53.5% to 46.5%. In the Brexit referendum, results varied from constituency to constituency. Glasgow North recorded the biggest Remain vote with 78% opting to stay in the EU whilst in Glasgow East this figure dropped to 56% the smallest Remain vote in Scotland. The city as a whole voted to remain in the EU, by 66.6% .6 to 33.3%. == Turnout Voter turnout has often been lower in Glasgow than in the rest of the United Kingdom. In the referendum of 2014 turnout was 75%, the lowest in Scotland. In the Brexit referendum the city's voters, while joining the rest of Scotland in voting to remain part of the EU, again had a low turnout of 56.2%, although SNP MP Angus Robertson placed this in the historical context of traditional low turnout in Glasgow. In the 2015 general election, the six Scottish constituencies with the lowest turnout were all in Glasgow. Turnout further decreased in the 2017 election when five of the city's seven seats reported a lowered turnout. Geography Glasgow is located on the banks of the River Clyde, in west-central Scotland. Its second most important river is the Kelvin whose name was used in creating the title of Baron Kelvin and thereby ended up as the SI unit of temperature. On older maps Glasgow is shown within the area of the pre-1975 county of Lanarkshire, from 1975 to 1996 it appears within Strathclyde region, more recent maps generally show Glasgow as one of 32 council areas in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Location Glasgow is located in the central belt of Scotland. Climate Despite its northerly latitude, similar to that of Moscow, Glasgow's climate is classified as oceanic Copen CFB. Data is available online for three official weather stations in the Glasgow area, Paisley, Abbotsinch and Bishopton. All are located to the west of the city centre. Owing to its westerly position and proximity to the Atlantic Ocean, Glasgow is one of Scotland's milder areas. Temperatures are usually higher than in most places of equal latitude away from the UK, due to the warming influence of the Gulf Stream. However, this results in less distinct seasons as compared to much of Western Europe. At Paisley, the annual precipitation average is 1,245 mm in. Winters are cool and overcast, with a January mean of 5.0 degrees Celsius .0 degrees Fahrenheit. .The lows sometimes fall below freezing. Since 2000 Glasgow has experienced few very cold, snowy and harsh winters where temperatures have fallen much below freezing. 
The most extreme instances have however seen temperatures around minus 12 degrees Celsius 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the area. Snowfall accumulation is infrequent and short-lived. The spring months March to May are usually mild and often quite pleasant. Many of Glasgow's trees and plants begin to flower at this time of the year and parks and gardens are filled with spring colors. During the summer months June to August, the weather can vary considerably from day to day, ranging from relatively cool and wet to quite warm with the odd sunny day. Long dry spells of warm weather are generally quite scarce. Overcast and humid conditions without rain are frequent. Generally the weather pattern is quite unsettled and erratic during these months, with only occasional heatwaves. The warmest month is usually July, with average highs above 20 degrees Celsius 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Summer days can occasionally reach up to 27 degrees Celsius 81 degrees Fahrenheit, and very rarely exceed 30 degrees Celsius 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Autumns are generally cool to mild with increasing precipitation. During early autumn there can be some settled periods of weather and it can feel pleasant with mild temperatures and some sunny days. The official Met Office data series goes back to 1959 and shows that there only have been a few warm and no hot summers in Glasgow, in stark contrast to areas further south in Great Britain and eastwards in Europe. The warmest month on record in the data series is July 2006, with an average high of 22.7 degrees Celsius .9 degrees Fahrenheit and low of 13.7 degrees Celsius .7 degrees Fahrenheit. Even this extreme event only matched a normal summer on similar parallels in continental Europe, underlining the maritime influences. The coldest month on record since the data series began is December 2010, during a severe cold wave affecting the British Isles. Even then, the December high was above freezing at 1.6 degrees Celsius .9 degrees Fahrenheit with the low of minus 4.4 degrees Celsius .1 degrees Fahrenheit. This still ensured Glasgow's coldest month of 2010 remained milder than the isotherm of minus 3 degrees Celsius 27 degrees Fahrenheit normally used to determine continental climate normals. Temperature extremes have ranged from minus 19.9 degrees Celsius minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 31.2 degrees Celsius 88 degrees Fahrenheit at Abbotsinch, and minus 14.8 degrees Celsius 5 degrees Fahrenheit to 31.0 degrees Celsius 88 degrees Fahrenheit at Paisley. The coldest temperature to have occurred in recent years was minus 12.5 degrees Celsius 9.5 degrees Fahrenheit at Bishopton during December 2010. However, the highest temperature ever recorded was 31.9 degrees Celsius 89 degrees Fahrenheit at Bishopton on 28 June 2018. Demographics In the 1950s, the population of the city of Glasgow area peaked at 1,089,000. Glasgow was then one of the most densely populated cities in the world. After the 1960s, clearances of poverty-stricken inner-city areas like the Gorbals and relocation to new towns, such as East Kilbride and Cumbernauld led to population decline. In addition, the boundaries of the city were changed twice during the late 20th century, making direct comparisons difficult. The city continues to expand beyond the city council boundaries into surrounding suburban areas, encompassing around 400 square miles (1040 square kilometers) of all adjoining suburbs if commuter towns and villages are included. There are two distinct definitions for the population of Glasgow. The Glasgow City Council area, which lost the districts of Rutherglen and Cambuslang to South Lanarkshire in 1996, and the Greater Glasgow Urban Area, which includes the conurbation around the city. Glasgow's population influx in the 18th and 19th centuries was related to economic expansion as well as internally generated growth with the vast majority of newcomers to the city from outside Scotland being from Ireland, especially the north-western counties of Donegal, Fermanagh, Tyrone and Derry. In the 1881 UK census, 83% of the population was born in Scotland, 13% in Ireland, 3% in England and 1% elsewhere. By 1911, the city was no longer gaining population by migration. The demographic percentages in the 1951 UK census were, born in Scotland 93%, Ireland 3%, England 3% and elsewhere 1%. 
In the early 20th century, many Lithuanian refugees began to settle in Glasgow and at its height in the 1950s, there were around 10,000 in the Glasgow area. Many Italian Scots also settled in Glasgow, originating from provinces like Frosinone between Rome and Naples and Lucca in northwest Tuscany at this time, many originally working as hokey pokey men. Historical population and city limits In the 1960s and 1970s, many Asians also settled in Glasgow, mainly in the Pollock Shields area. These number 30,000 Pakistanis, 15,000 Indians and 3,000 Bangladeshis as well as Chinese people, many of whom settled in the Garnet Hill area of the city. Since 2000, the UK government has pursued a policy of dispersal of asylum seekers to ease pressure on social housing in the London area. The city is also home to some 8,406 polls. Since the United Kingdom census 2001 the population decline has been reversed. The population was static for a time, but due to migration from other parts of Scotland as well as immigration from overseas, the population has begun to grow. The population of the city council area was 593,245 in 2011 and around 2,300,000 people live in the Glasgow Travel to Work area. This area is defined as consisting of over 10% of residents travelling into Glasgow to work and is without fixed boundaries. The population density of London following the 2011 census was recorded as 5,200 people per square kilometre, while 3,395 people per square kilometre were registered in Glasgow. In 1931, the population density was 16,166 per square miles, 6,242 per square kilometers, highlighting the clearances into the suburbs and new towns that were built to reduce the size of one of Europe's most densely populated cities. In 2005, Glasgow had the lowest life expectancy of any UK city at 72.9 years. Much was made of this during the 2008 Glasgow East by-election. In 2008, a World Health Organization report about health inequalities, revealing that male life expectancy varied from 54 years in Calton to 82 years in nearby Lenzie, East Dunbartonshire. <laughs> Areas and suburbs <laughs> <laughs> City centre The city centre is bounded by the High Street to the east, the River Clyde to the south and the M8 motorway to the west and north, which was built through the Townhead, Charing Cross, Cowcaddens and Anderston areas in the 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> Retail and theatre district The city centre is based on a grid system of streets on the north bank of the River Clyde. The heart of the city is George Square, site of many of Glasgow's public statues and the elaborate Victorian Glasgow City Chambers, headquarters of Glasgow City Council. To the south and west are the shopping precincts of Argyle Street, Souchy Hall Street and Buchanan Street, the last featuring more upmarket retailers and winner of the Academy of Urbanism, Great Street Award, 2008. The collection of shops around these streets accumulate to become known as the Style Mile. The main shopping areas include Buchanan Street, Buchanan Galleries, linking Buchanan Street and Souchy Hall Street, and the St. Enoch Center linking Argyle Street and St. Enoch Square, with the up-market Prince's Square, which specifically features shops such as Ted Baker, Radley and Kurt Geiger. The Italian Center in Ingram Street also specializes in designer labels. Glasgow's retail portfolio forms the UK's second largest and most economically important retail sector after central London. The city centre is home to most of Glasgow's main cultural venues the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, Glasgow City Hall, Theatre Royal, performing home of Scottish Opera and Scottish Ballet, the Pavilion Theatre, the King's Theatre, Glasgow Film Theatre, Tron Theatre, Gallery of Modern Art, Goma, Mitchell Library and Theatre, the Centre for Contemporary Arts, McClellan Galleries, and the Lighthouse Museum of architecture. The world's tallest cinema, the 18-screen Cineworld, is situated on Renfrew Street. The city centre is also home to four of Glasgow's higher education institutions, the University of Strathclyde, the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland, Glasgow School of Art and Glasgow Caledonian University, and to the largest college in Britain the City of Glasgow College in Cathedral Street. Topic. Merchant City. 
To the east is the commercial and residential district of Merchant City. The Merchant City was formerly the residential district of the wealthy city merchants in the 18th and early 19th centuries, particularly the tobacco lords from whom many of the streets take their name. As the Industrial Revolution and the wealth it brought to the city resulted in the expansion of Glasgow's central area westward, the original medieval centre was left behind. Glasgow Cross, situated at the junction of High Street, Gallow Gate, Trongate and Saltmarket was the original centre of the city, symbolised by its Mercat Cross. Glasgow Cross encompasses the Tollbooth Clock Tower, all that remains of the original city chambers, which was destroyed by fire in 1926. Moving northward up High Street towards Rottenrow and Townhead lies the 15th-century Glasgow Cathedral and the province lordship. Due to growing industrial pollution levels in the mid to late 19th century, the area fell out of favour with residents. From the late 1980s onwards, the merchant city has been rejuvenated with luxury city centre flats and warehouse conversions. This regeneration has supported an increasing number of cafes and restaurants. The area is also home to a number of high end boutique style shops and some of Glasgow's most upmarket stores. The Merchant City is the centre of Glasgow's growing cultural quarter. Based on King Street, the Saltmarket and Trongate, and at the heart of the annual Merchant City Festival. The area has supported a huge growth in art galleries, the origins of which can be found in the late 1980s when it attracted artist-led organizations that could afford the cheap rents required to operate in vacant manufacturing or retail spaces. The artistic and cultural potential of the Merchant City as a cultural quarter was harnessed by independent arts organizations and Glasgow City Council, and the recent development of Trongate 103, which houses galleries, workshops, artist studios and production spaces, is considered a major outcome of the continued partnership between both. The area also contains a number of theatres and concert venues, including the Tron Theatre, the Old Fruit Market, the Trades Hall, St Andrews in the Square, Merchant Square, and the City Halls. Topic. Financial District IFSD. To the western edge of the city centre, occupying the areas of Blytheswood Hill and Anderston, lies Glasgow's Financial District, known officially as the International Financial Services District IFSD, although often irreverently nicknamed by the contemporary press as the Square Kilometre or Wall Street on Clyde. Since the late 1980s the construction of many modern office blocks and high-rise developments have paved the way for the IFSD to become one of the UK's largest financial quarters. With a reputation as an established financial services centre, coupled with comprehensive support services, Glasgow continues to attract and grow new business. Of the ten largest general insurance companies in the UK, eight have a base or head office in Glasgow, including Direct Line, Azure, AXA and Norwich Union. Key banking sector companies have also moved some of their services to commercial property in Glasgow, Resolution, J.P. Morgan Chase, Barclays Wealth, Tesco Personal Finance, Morgan Stanley, Lloyds Banking Group, Clydesdale Bank, BNP Paribas, HSBC, Santander and the Royal Bank of Scotland. The Ministry of Defence have several departments and Clydeport, the Glasgow Stock Exchange, Student Loans Company, Scottish Executive Enterprise, Transport and Lifelong Learning Department, BT Group, Scottish Friendly. Scottish Qualifications Authority and Scottish Enterprise also have their headquarters in the district. Royal Dutch Shell also have one of their six worldwide shared business centres located in the IFSD. Hilton have a corporate office based in the area. West End Glasgow's West End is a bohemian district of cafes, tea rooms, bars, boutiques, upmarket hotels, clubs and restaurants in the hinterland of Kelvingrove Park, the University of Glasgow, Glasgow Botanic Gardens and the Scottish Exhibition and Conference Centre, focused especially on the area's main thoroughfares of Argyle Street Finiston, Great Western Road and Byers Road. The area is popular with tourists and students and contains many hotels. The West End includes residential areas of Hillhead, Dowan Hill, Kelvin Grove, Kelvinside, Hinland, Broomhill, Scottstown, Jordan Hill, Kelvindale and Anisland, and, to an increasing extent, Partick. The name is also increasingly being used to refer to any area to the west of Charing Cross. 
The west end is bisected by the River Kelvin, which flows from the Campsie Fells in the north and confluences with the River Clyde at Yorkle Quay. The spire of Sir George Gilbert Scott's Glasgow University main building the second largest Gothic revival building in Great Britain is a major landmark, and can be seen from miles around, sitting atop Gilmore Hill. The university itself is the fourth oldest in the English-speaking world. Much of the city's student population is based in the West End, adding to its cultural vibrancy. The area is also home to the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum, Hunterian Museum and Art Gallery, Kelvin Hall Museums and Research Facilities, Stores, and Community Sport. Adjacent to the Kelvin Hall was the Museum of Transport, which reopened in 2010 after moving to a new location on a former dockland site at Glasgow Harbour where the River Kelvin flows into the Clyde. The new building is built to a design by Zaha Hadid. The West End Festival, one of Glasgow's largest festivals, is held annually in June. Glasgow is the home of the SECC, Great Britain's largest exhibition and conference centre. On 30 September 2013, a major expansion of the SECC facilities at the former Queen's Dock by Foster & Partners officially opened, the 13,000-seat Hydro Arena. Topic East End The East End extends from Glasgow Cross in the city centre to the boundary with North and South Lanarkshire. It is home to the Glasgow Barrowland Market, popularly known as the Barris, Barrowland Ballroom, Glasgow Green, and Celtic Park, home of Celtic FC. Many of the original sandstone tenements remain in this district. The East End was once a major industrial centre, home to Sir William Errol & Co., James Templeton & Co. and William Beardmore & Company. A notable local employer continues to be the Wellpark Brewery, home of Tenants Lager. The Glasgow Necropolis Garden Cemetery was created by the Merchant's House on a hill above the cathedral in 1831. Roots curve through the landscape uphill to the 62-metre high statue of John Knox at the summit. There are two late 18th-century tenements in Gallowgate. Dating from 1771 and 1780, both have been well restored. The construction of Charlotte Street was financed by David Dale, whose former scale can be gauged by the one remaining house, now run by the National Trust for Scotland. Further along Charlotte Street there stands a modern Gillespie, Kidd and Koya building of some note. Once a school, it has been converted into offices. Surrounding these buildings are a series of innovative housing developments conceived as Homes for the Future, part of a project during the city's year as UK City of Architecture and Design in 1999. East of Glasgow Cross is St Andrews in the Square, the oldest post Reformation church in Scotland, built in 1739 to 1757 and displaying a Presbyterian grandeur befitting the church of the city's wealthy tobacco merchants. Also close by is the more modest Episcopalian Street Andrews by the Green, the oldest Episcopal church in Scotland. The Episcopalian St Andrews was also known as the Whistlin Kirk, due to it being the first church after the Reformation to own an organ. Overlooking Glasgow Green is the facade of Templeton on the Green, featuring vibrant polychromatic brickwork intended to evoke the Doge's Palace in Venice. The extensive Tollcross Park was originally developed from the estate of James Dunlop, the owner of a local steelworks. His large baronial mansion was built in 1848 by David Bryce, which later housed the city's children's museum until the 1980s. Today, the mansion is a sheltered housing complex. The new Scottish National Indoor Sports Arena, a modern replacement for the Kelvin Hall, is in Dalmarnock. The area was the site of the Athletes' Village for the 2014 Commonwealth Games, located adjacent to the new indoor sports arena. The East End Healthy Living Centre was established in mid-2005 at Crownpoint Road with lottery funding and city grants to serve community needs in the area. Now called the Glasgow Club Crownpoint Sports Complex, the centre provides service such as sports facilities, health advice, stress management, leisure and vocational classes. To the north of the East End lie the two large gasometers of Provan Gas Works, which stand overlooking Alexandra Park and a major interchange between the M8 and M80 motorways. Topic south side Glasgow's south side sprawls out south of the Clyde. The urban area includes some of Greater Glasgow's most affluent suburbs such as Newton Mearns, White Craigs, Clarkston, Giffnick and Thornton Hall, all of which are outside the city boundaries in East Renfrewshire. Newlands and Dumbreck are examples of high-value residential districts within the city boundaries. There are many areas containing a high concentration of sandstone tenements, examples being Battlefield, Govanhill, Mount Florida and Shawlands. 
The large suburb of Pollockshields comprises both a quiet western part with undulating tree-lined boulevards lined with expensive villas, and a busier eastern part with a high-density grid of tenements and small shops. The south side also includes some post-war housing estates of various sizes such as Tory Glen, Pollock, Castle Milk and Arden. The towns of Cambuslang and Rutherglen were included in the city of Glasgow district from 1975 to 1996, but are now in the South Lanarkshire Council area. Although predominantly residential, the area does have several notable public buildings, including Charles Rennie Mackintosh's Scotland Street School Museum and House for an Art Lover, the Burrell Collection in Pollock Country Park, Alexander Greek. Thompson's Homewood House Villa, the National Football Stadium Hampton Park in Mount Florida home of Queens Park FC and Ibrox Stadium home of Rangers FC. The former Docklands site at Pacific Quay on the south bank of the River Clyde, opposite the SECC, is the site of the Glasgow Science Centre and the headquarters of BBC Scotland and STV Group owner of STV, in a new purpose-built digital media campus. In addition, several new bridges spanning the River Clyde have been built, including the Clyde Arc known by locals as the Squinty Bridge at Pacific Quay and others at Tradeston and Springfield Quay. The south side also includes many public parks, including Lynn Park, Queen's Park, Bellahouston Park and Roken Glen Park, and several golf clubs, including the championship course at Hags Castle. The south side is also home to Pollock Country Park, which was awarded the accolade of Europe's Best Park 2008. Pollock Park is Glasgow's largest park and the only country park within the city boundaries. Govan is a district and former borough in the southwestern part of the city. It is situated on the south bank of the River Clyde, opposite Partick. It was an administratively independent police borough from 1864 until it was incorporated into the expanding city of Glasgow in 1912. Govan has a legacy as an engineering and shipbuilding centre of international repute and is home to one of two Bay Systems surface ships shipyards on the River Clyde and the precision engineering firm, Thales Optronics. It is also home to the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, one of the largest hospitals in the country, and the maintenance depot for the Glasgow subway system. The wider Govan area includes the districts of Ibrox, Kinning Park and Cessnock. North Glasgow North Glasgow extends out from the north of the city centre towards the affluent suburbs of Bearsden, Milngavy and Bishopbriggs in East Dunbartonshire and Clydebank in West Dunbartonshire. The area also contains some of the city's poorest residential areas. Park is one such district, where levels of unemployment and drug abuse continue to be above the national average. Much of the housing in areas such as Postle Park and Hamilton Hill have fallen into a state of disrepair in recent years. This has led to large scale redevelopment of much of the poorer housing stock in North Glasgow, and the wider regeneration of many areas, such as Rushill, which have been transformed. Many run down tenements have now been refurbished or replaced by modern housing estates. Much of the housing stock in North Glasgow is rented social housing, with a high proportion of high-rise tower blocks, managed by the North Glasgow Housing Association Trading as Ing Homes and Glasgow Housing Association. Maryhill consists of well-maintained traditional sandstone tenements. Although historically a working class area, its borders with the upmarket west end of the city mean that it is relatively wealthy compared to the rest of the north of the city, containing affluent areas such as Maryhill Park and North Kelvinside. Maryhill is also the location of Firhill Stadium, home of Partick Thistle FC since 1909. The junior team, Maryhill FC are also located in this part of North Glasgow. The Forth and Clyde Canal passes through this part of the city, and at one stage formed a vital part of the local economy. It was for many years polluted and largely unused after the decline of heavy industry, but recent efforts to regenerate and reopen the canal to navigation have seen it rejuvenated, including art campuses at Port Dundas. Sighthole was home to Scotland's largest asylum seeker community but the area is now regenerated as part of the Youth Olympic Games bid. A huge part of the economic life of Glasgow was once located in Springburn, where the Saracen foundry, engineering works of firms like Charles Tennant and locomotive workshops employed many Glaswegians. Indeed, Glasgow dominated this type of manufacturing, with 25% of all the world's locomotives being built in the area at one stage. It was home to the headquarters of the North British Locomotive Company. 
Today part of the St. Rolex Railway Works continues in use as a railway maintenance facility, all that is left of the industry in Springburn. Culture The city has many amenities for a wide range of cultural activities, from curling to opera and ballet and from football to art appreciation. It also has a large selection of museums that include those devoted to transport, religion, and modern art. Many of the city's cultural sites were celebrated in 1990 when Glasgow was designated European City of Culture. The city's principal municipal library, the Mitchell Library, has grown into one of the largest public reference libraries in Europe, currently housing some 1.3 million books, an extensive collection of newspapers, and thousands of photographs and maps. Of academic libraries, Glasgow University Library started in the 15th century and is one of the oldest and largest libraries in Europe, with unique and distinctive collections of international status. Most of Scotland's national arts organisations are based in Glasgow, including Scottish Opera, Scottish Ballet, National Theatre of Scotland, Royal Scottish National Orchestra, BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra, and Scottish Youth Theatre. Glasgow has its own poet laureate. A post created in 1999 for Edwin Morgan and occupied by Liz Lockhead from 2005 until 2011, when she stood down to take up the position of Scots Makar. Jim Carruth was appointed to the position of Poet Laureate for Glasgow in 2014 as part of the 2014 Commonwealth Games legacy. In 2013, PETA declared Glasgow to be the most vegan friendly city in the UK. Recreation Glasgow is home to a variety of theatres including the King's Theatre, the Theatre Royal and the Citizens Theatre and is home to many museums and art galleries, the largest and most famous being the Kelvingrove Art Gallery and Museum, the Hunterian Museum and Art Gallery, the Gallery of Modern Art and the Burrell Collection. Most of the museums and galleries in Glasgow are publicly owned and free to enter. The city has hosted many exhibitions over the years, including being the UK City of Architecture 1999, European Capital of Culture 1990, National City of Sport 1995-1999 and European Capital of Sport 2003. Glasgow has also hosted the National Mod no less than 12 times since 1895. In addition, unlike the older and larger Edinburgh Festival where all Edinburgh's main festivals occur in the last three weeks of August, Glasgow's festivals fill the calendar. Festivals include the Glasgow International Comedy Festival, Glasgow International Festival of Visual Art, Glasgow International Jazz Festival, Celtic Connections, Glasgow Fair, Glasgow Film Festival, West End Festival, Merchant City Festival, Glasgow, and the World Pipe Band Championships. Topic music scene The city is home to numerous orchestras, ensembles and bands including those of Scottish Opera, Scottish Ballet, Royal Scottish National Orchestra, BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra and related to the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland, the National Youth Orchestra of Scotland and the universities and colleges, choirs of all type are well supported. Glasgow has many live music venues, pubs, and clubs. Some of the city's more well-known venues include the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, the Hydro, the SECC, Glasgow Cat House, the Art School, King Tut's Wah Wah Hut where Oasis were spotted and signed by Glaswegian record mogul Alan McGee, the Queen Margaret Union who have Kurt Cobain's footprint locked in a safe, the Barrowland, a ballroom converted into a live music venue as well as the Garage, which is the largest nightclub in Scotland. More recent mid-sized venues include ABC and the O2 Academy, which play host to a similar range of acts. There are also a large number of smaller venues and bars, which host many local and touring musicians, including Stereo, 13th Note and Nice and Sleazy. Most recent recipient of the SLTN Music Pub of the Year Award was Bar Block, awarded in November 2011. In 2010, Glasgow was named the UK's fourth most musical city by PRS for Music. Glasgow is also the most mentioned city in the UK in song titles, outside London according, to a chart produced by PRS for Music, with 119, ahead of closest rivals Edinburgh who received 95 mentions in recent years. The success of bands such as The Blue Nile, Gun, Simple Minds, Del Amitri, Texas, Hipsway, Love and Money, Idlewild, Deacon Blue, Orange Juice, Lloyd Cole and the Commotions, Teenage Fanclub, Bell and Sebastian, Camera Obscura, Franz Ferdinand, Mogwai, 
Travis, and Primal Scream has significantly boosted the profile of the Glasgow music scene, prompting Time magazine to liken Glasgow to Detroit during its 1960s Motown heyday. More recent successes include the Fratellis, Churches, Rusty, Glass Vegas and Twin Atlantic. The city of Glasgow was appointed a UNESCO City of Music on 20 August 2008 as part of the Creative Cities Network. Glasgow's contemporary dance music scene has been spearheaded by Slam, and their record label Soma Quality Recordings, with their pressure club nights attracting DJs and clubbers from around the world, which was previously held at the Arches but following that venue's closure due to claims of unsafe level of drug use has moved to sub-club. The MOBO Awards were held at the SECC on 30 September 2009, making Glasgow the first out of London City to host the event since its launch in 1995. On 9 November 2014, Glasgow hosted the 2014 MTV Europe Music Awards at the SSE Hydro. It was the second time Scotland hosted the show since 2003 in Edinburgh and overall the fifth time that the United Kingdom has hosted the show since 2011 in Belfast, Northern Ireland. The event was hosted by Nicki Minaj and featured performances from Ariana Grande, Enrique Iglesias, Ed Sheeran, U2 and Slash. Topic media There have been hundreds of films made about Glasgow or in Glasgow, both BBC Scotland and STV have their headquarters in Glasgow. Television programs filmed in Glasgow include Rab C. Nesbitt, Taggart, High Times, River City, City Lights, Chewin the Fat, Still Game and Lovesick. Most recently the long-running series Question Time and the early evening quiz program Eggheads moved its production base to the city. Most national lottery game shows are also filmed in Glasgow, children's game show Copycats is filmed there, and the Irish, UK program Mrs Brown's Boys is filmed at BBC Scotland. The Scottish press publishes various newspapers in the city such as the Evening Times, the Herald, the Sunday Herald, the Sunday Mail and the Daily Record. Scottish editions of Trinity Mirror and News International titles are printed in the city. STV Group is a Glasgow-based media conglomerate with interests in television, and publishing advertising. STV Group owns and operates both Scottish ITV franchises Central Scotland and Grampian, both branded STV. Glasgow also had its own television channel, STV Glasgow, which launched in June 2014, which also shows some of Glasgow's own programmes filmed at the STV headquarters in Glasgow. Shows included The Riverside Show, Scottish Kitchen, City Safari, Football Show and Live at Five. STV Glasgow merged with STV Edinburgh to form STV2 in April 2017 which eventually closed in June 2018. Various radio stations are also located in Glasgow. Bauer Radio owns the principal commercial radio stations in Glasgow, Clyde 1 and Clyde 2, which can reach over 2.3 million listeners. In 2004, STV Group PLC, then known as SMG PLC sold its 27.8% stake in Scottish Radio Holdings to the broadcasting group EMAP for £90.5 million. Other stations broadcasting from Glasgow include 105.2 Smooth Radio, Real Radio and 96.3 Rock Radio, which are all owned by GMG Radio. Global Radio's Central Scotland radio station Capital FM Scotland also broadcast from studios in Glasgow. The city has a strong community radio sector, including Celtic Music Radio, Subcity Radio, Radio Magnetic, Sunny Govan Radio, Awas FM and Insight Radio. <laughs> Religion Glasgow is a city of significant religious diversity. The Church of Scotland and the Roman Catholic Church are the two largest Christian denominations in the city. There are 147 congregations in the Church of Scotland's Presbytery of Glasgow of which 104 are within the city boundaries, the other 43 being in adjacent areas. Within the city boundaries there are 65 parishes of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Glasgow and four parishes of the Diocese of Motherwell. The city has four Christian cathedrals, Glasgow Cathedral, of the Church of Scotland, St Andrew's Cathedral, of the Roman Catholic Church, St Mary's Cathedral, of the Scottish Episcopal Church, and St Luke's Cathedral, of the Greek Orthodox Church. The Baptist Church and Salvation Army are well represented. 32% of the population follow the Protestant Church of Scotland whilst 29% following the Roman Catholic Church. According to the 2001 census Christians overall form 
Much of the city's Catholic population are those of Irish ancestry. The divisions between the two denominations and their respective communities play a major part in sectarianism in Glasgow, in a similar nature to that of Northern Ireland, although not segregated territorially as in Belfast. Biblical Unitarians are represented by three Christadelphian ecclesias, referred to geographically as South, Central, and Kelvin. The Sikh community is served by four gurdwaras. Two are situated in the West End Central Gurdwara Singh Sabha in Finiston and Guru Nanak Sikh Temple in Kelvinbridge and two in the Southside area of Pollock Shields Guru Granth Sahib Gurdwara and Sri Guru Teg Bahadur Gurdwara. In 2013, Scotland's first purpose-built Gurdwara opened in a massive opening ceremony. Built at a cost of £3.8 million it can hold 1,500 worshippers. Central Gurdwara is currently constructing a new building in the city. There are almost 10,000 Sikhs in Scotland and the majority live in Glasgow. Glasgow Central Mosque in the Gorbals district is the largest mosque in Scotland and, along with 12 other mosques in the city, caters for the city's Muslim population, estimated to number 33,000. Glasgow also has a Hindu mandir. Glasgow has seven synagogues with the seventh largest Jewish population in the United Kingdom after London, Manchester, Leeds, Gateshead, Brighton and Bournemouth, but once had a Jewish population second only to London, estimated at 20,000 in the Gorbals alone. In 1993, the St. Mungo Museum of Religious Life and Art opened in Glasgow. It is believed to be the only public museum to examine all the world's major religious faiths. Topic. Language Glaswegian, otherwise known as the Glasgow Patter, is a local variety of Scots. Glaswegian is a dialect, more than an alternative pronunciation. Words also change their meaning depending on context, e.g., away can mean leaving, as in am away, an instruction to stop being a nuisance as in away why ye, or drunk, or demented, as in he's away why it. Ginger is a term for any carbonated soft drink, historically referring to ginger beer a bottle o' ginger, IPA, ball, dinder. Then there are words whose meaning has no obvious relationship to that in standard English. Coupon means face via to punch a ticket coupon. A headbutt is known in many parts of the British Isles as a Glasgow kiss, although this term is rarely used by Glaswegians, who say Malky, e.g. I'll malky ye, or stick the hide nut on ye. A speaker of Glaswegian might refer to those originating from the Scottish Highlands and the Western Isles as toicters, while they would reciprocate by referring to Glaswegians as keelies. More recently, the word Ouija has become more widely used to describe Glaswegians. The long running TV drama Taggart and the comedies Empty, Chewin' the Fat, Rab C. Nesbitt, Still Game, Limmy's Show, and Dear Green Place depict the Glaswegian patois, while Kevin Bridges, Frankie Boyle, Craig Ferguson, and Billy Connolly have made Glaswegian humour known to the rest of the world. Glasgow is Scotland's main locus of Gaelic language use outside the Highlands and Islands. In 2011, 5,878 residents of the city over age 3 spoke Gaelic, amounting to 1.0% of the population. Of Scotland's 25 largest cities, only Inverness, the unofficial capital of the Highlands, has a larger percentage of Gaelic speakers. In the Greater Glasgow area there were 8,899 Gaelic speakers or 0.8% of the population. Both the Gaelic language television station BBC Alba and the Gaelic language radio station BBC Radio Nan Gaedel have studios in Glasgow, their only locations outside the Highlands and Islands. Topic: <laughs> Architecture. Very little of medieval Glasgow remains, the two main landmarks from this period being the 15th century Province Lordship and 13th century St Mungo's Cathedral, although the original medieval street plan along with many of the street names on the eastern side of the city centre has largely survived intact. The vast majority of the city as seen today dates from the 19th century. As a result, Glasgow has an impressive heritage of Victorian architecture, the Glasgow City Chambers, the main building of the University of Glasgow, designed by Sir George Gilbert Scott, and the Kelvingrove Art Gallery and Museum, designed by Sir John W. Simpson, are notable examples. The city is notable for architecture designed by the Glasgow School, the most notable exponent of that style being Charles Rennie Mackintosh. 
Macintosh was an architect and designer in the arts and crafts movement and the main exponent of Art Nouveau in the United Kingdom, designing numerous noted Glasgow buildings such as the Glasgow School of Art, Willow Tea Rooms, and the Scotland Street School Museum. A hidden gem of Glasgow, also designed by Macintosh, is the Queen's Cross Church, the only church by the renowned artist to be built. Another architect who has had an enduring impact on the city's appearance is Alexander Thompson, with notable examples including the Holmwood House Villa, and likewise Sir John James Burnett, awarded the RIBA's Royal Gold Medal for his lifetime's service to architecture. The buildings reflect the wealth and self confidence of the residents of the second city of the empire. Glasgow generated immense wealth from trade and the industries that developed from the Industrial Revolution. The shipyards, marine engineering, steel making, and heavy industry all contributed to the growth of the city. Many of the city's most impressive buildings were built with red or blonde sandstone, but during the industrial era those colors disappeared under a pervasive black layer of soot and pollutants from the furnaces, until the Clean Air Act was introduced in 1956. In recent years many of these buildings have been cleaned and restored to their original appearance. There are over 1,800 listed buildings in the city, of architectural and historical importance, and 23 conservation areas extending over 1,471 hectares. Such areas include the Central Area, Dennistown, the West End, Pollockshields, the first major planned garden suburb in Britain, Newlands and Carmunnock Village. Modern buildings in Glasgow include the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, and along the banks of the Clyde are the Glasgow Science Centre, the Hydro and the Scottish Exhibition and Conference Centre, whose Clyde Auditorium was designed by Sir Norman Foster, and is colloquially known as the Armadillo. In 2006 Zaha Hadid won a competition to design the new Museum of Transport. Hadid's museum opened on the waterfront in 2011 and has been renamed the Riverside Museum to reflect the change in location and to celebrate Glasgow's rich industrial heritage stemming from the Clyde. Glasgow's impressive historical and modern architectural traditions were celebrated in 1999 when the city was designated UK City of Architecture and Design, winning the accolade over Liverpool and Edinburgh. Topic economy Glasgow has the largest economy in Scotland and is at the hub of the metropolitan area of West Central Scotland. Glasgow also has the third highest GDP per capita of any city in the UK after London and Edinburgh. The city itself sustains more than 410,000 jobs in over 12,000 companies. Over 153,000 jobs were created in the city between 2000 and 2005 a growth rate of 32%. Glasgow's annual economic growth rate of 4.4% is now second only to that of London. In 2005, over 17,000 new jobs were created, and 2006 saw private sector investment in the city reaching £4.2 billion, an increase of 22% in a single year. 55% of the residents in the Greater Glasgow area commute to the city every day. Once dominant export-orientated manufacturing industries such as shipbuilding and other heavy engineering have been gradually replaced in importance by more diversified forms of economic activity, although major manufacturing firms continue to be headquartered in the city, such as Agreco, Weir Group, Clyde Blowers, Howden, Lynn Products, Firebrand Games, William Grant & Sons, White & McKay, The Edderington Group, British Polar Engines and Albion Motors. Glasgow was once one of the most significant cities in the UK for manufacturing, which generated a great deal of the city's wealth, the most prominent industry being shipbuilding based on the River Clyde. Although Glasgow owed much of its economic growth to the shipbuilding industry, which still continues today in the form of Bay Systems Maritime, Naval Ships 2 shipyards, the city has its roots in the tobacco trade and is noted to have risen from its medieval slumber. From trade in tobacco, pioneered by figures such as John Glassford. The city was also noted for its locomotive construction industry led by firms such as the North British Locomotive Company which grew during the 19th century before entering a decline in the 1960s. Whilst manufacturing has declined, Glasgow's economy has seen significant relative growth of tertiary sector industries such as financial and business services, communications, biosciences, creative industries, healthcare, higher education, retail and tourism. Glasgow is now the second most popular foreign tourist destination in Scotland fifth in the UK and offers Scotland's largest retail centre. 
Between 1998 and 2001, the city's financial services sector grew at a rate of 30%, making considerable gains on Edinburgh, which has historically been the centre of the Scottish financial sector. Glasgow is now one of Europe's 16 largest financial centres, with a growing number of blue-chip financial sector companies establishing significant operations or headquarters in the city. The 1990s and first decade of the 21st century saw substantial growth in the number of call centres based in Glasgow. In 2007 roughly 20,000 people, a third of all call centre employees in Scotland, were employed by Glasgow call centres. This growth and its high use of recruitment agencies to hire graduates as temporary workers has led to accusations of exploitative practices such as long hours, poor pay and lack of job security by the TUC and other union bodies. In recent years some call centers have taken steps to rectify this criticism. The city's main manufacturing industries include companies involved in shipbuilding, engineering, construction, brewing and distilling, printing and publishing, chemicals and textiles as well as newer growth sectors such as optoelectronics, software development and biotechnology. Glasgow forms the western part of the Silicon Glen high-tech sector of Scotland. Topic: Transport Topic. Public transport Glasgow has a large urban transport system, mostly managed by the Strathclyde Partnership for Transport The city has many bus services, since bus deregulation almost all are provided by private operators though SPT part funds some services. The principal bus operators within the city are, First Glasgow, McGill's Bus Services, Stagecoach West Scotland and Glasgow Citybus. The main bus terminal in the city is Buchanan Bus Station. Glasgow has the most extensive urban rail network in the UK outside London with rail services travelling to a large part of the west of Scotland. Most lines were electrified under British Rail. All trains running within Scotland, including the local Glasgow trains, are operated by Abilio Scotrail, who own the franchise as determined by the Scottish Government. Central Station and Queen Street Station are the two main railway terminals. Glasgow Central is the terminus of the 641.6 kilometers, 398.7 miles long West Coast Main Line from London Euston. All services to and from England use this station. Glasgow Central is also the terminus for suburban services on the south side of Glasgow, Ayrshire and Inverclyde, as well as being served by the Cross City Link from Dalmere to Motherwell. Most other services within Scotland, the main line to Edinburgh, plus services to Aberdeen, Dundee, Inverness and the Western Highlands, operate from Queen Street Station. The city's suburban network is currently divided by the River Clyde, and the Crossrail Glasgow initiative has been proposed to link them, it is currently awaiting funding from the Scottish Government. The city is linked to Edinburgh by four direct railway links. In addition to the suburban rail network, SPT operates the Glasgow subway. The subway is the United Kingdom's only completely underground metro system, and is generally recognised as the world's third underground railway after the London Underground and the Budapest Metro. Both rail and subway stations have a number of park and ride facilities. As part of the wider regeneration along the banks of the River Clyde a bus rapid transit system called Clyde Fastlink is operational between Glasgow City Centre to the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital. Topic. Shipping Global ship management is carried out by maritime and logistics firms in Glasgow, employing over 100,000 seafaring colleagues in client companies. This reflects maritime skills over many decades and the training and education of deck officers and marine engineers from around the world at the City of Glasgow College, Nautical Campus, from which graduate around one third of all such graduates in the United Kingdom. The main operational dock within Glasgow operated by Clydeport is the King George V Dock, near Brayhead. Since the advent of containerization, most other facilities, such as Hunterston Terminal are located in the deep waters of the Firth of Clyde, which together handle some 7.5 million tons of cargo each year. Longer distant commercial sea shipping from Glasgow occurs regularly to many European destinations including Mediterranean and Baltic ports via passage through the Sea of the Hebrides. Leisure and tourist sailing is important, at marinas and towns of the Clyde, including the P.S. Waverley, the world's last operational seagoing paddle steamer. Roads <inaudible> 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 
The main M8 motorway passes around the city centre and connects with the M77, M74 motorway, M73, and M80 motorways. The A82 connects the city to Argyll and the Western Highlands. The M74 runs directly south towards Carlisle. Other strategic roads in the city include the East End Regeneration Route, which provides easier access to areas of the East End, linking the M8 to the extended M74. Topic. Airports The city has three international airports within 45 minutes travel of the city centre, as well as a centrally located seaplane terminal. Two are dedicated to Glasgow while the third is Edinburgh International which, as it is situated on the west side of Edinburgh, is relatively close to Glasgow. These airports are Glasgow Airport GLA 8 miles 10 kilometers west of the city centre in Renfrewshire, Glasgow Prestwick Airport PIC 30 miles 50 kilometers southwest in Ayrshire, Edinburgh Airport EDI 34 miles 50 kilometers east in Edinburgh, and Glasgow Seaplane Terminal, by the Glasgow Science Centre on the River Clyde. There are also several smaller, domestic and private airports around the city. There is a heliport, Glasgow City Heliport located at Stobcross Quay on the banks of the Clyde. All of the international airports are easily accessibly by public transport, with GLA and EDI directly linked by a bus routes from the main bus station, and a direct rail connection to pick from Glasgow Central Station. A plan to provide a direct rail link to Glasgow International was dropped with the cancelling of the Glasgow Airport Rail Link in 2009, though the Scottish Government is actively, as of 2014, considering alternative rail-based surface access possibilities. Topic housing Glasgow is known for its tenements. The red and blonde sandstone buildings are some of the most recognisable features of the city. These were the most popular form of housing in 19th and 20th century Glasgow, and remain the most common form of dwelling in Glasgow today. Tenements are commonly bought by a wide range of social types and are favoured for their large rooms, high ceilings and original period features. The Hindland area of Glasgow became the first tenement conservation area in the UK and includes some tenement houses with as many as six bedrooms. Like many cities in the UK, Glasgow witnessed the construction of high-rise housing in tower blocks in the 1960s, along with large overspill estates on the periphery of the city, in areas like Pollock, Knitzhill, Castlemilk, Easterhouse, Milton and Drumchapel. These were built to replace the decaying inner city tenement buildings originally built for workers who migrated from the surrounding countryside, the Highlands, and the rest of the United Kingdom, particularly Ireland, to feed the local demand for labour. The massive demand at that time outstripped the pace of new building, and many originally fine tenements often became overcrowded and unsanitary. Many degenerated into infamous slums, such as the Gorbals. Efforts to improve this housing situation, most successfully with the City Improvement Trust in the late 19th century, cleared the slums of the old town areas such as the Trongate, High Street and Glasgow Cross. Subsequent urban renewal initiatives, such as those motivated by the Bruce Report, entailed the comprehensive demolition of slum tenement areas, the development of new towns on the periphery of the city, and the construction of tower blocks. The policy of tenement demolition is now considered to have been short-sighted, wasteful and largely unsuccessful. Many of Glasgow's worst tenements were refurbished into desirable accommodation in the 1970s and 1980s and the policy of demolition is considered to have destroyed many fine examples of a universally admired architectural style. The Glasgow Housing Association took ownership of the housing stock from the City Council on 7 March 2003, and has begun a £96 million clearance and demolition programme to clear and demolish many of the high-rise flats. Topic healthcare Medical care is mainly provided by NHS Scotland and is directly administered by NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Major hospitals, including those with accident and emergency provision, are, the Western Infirmary, Gartnaval General Hospital, Glasgow Royal Infirmary and the Dental Hospital in the city centre, Stobhill Hospital in the north and the Victoria Infirmary and Queen Elizabeth University Hospital in the south side. Gartnaval Royal Hospital and the Priory are the two major psychiatric hospitals based in Glasgow. The Queen Elizabeth University Hospital QEUH campus is a 1,677-bed acute hospital located in Govan in the southwest of Glasgow. The hospital is built on the site of the former Southern General Hospital and opened at the end of April 2015. 
The hospital comprises a newly built 1,109-bed adult hospital, a 256-bed children's hospital and two major A&E departments, one for adults and one for children in addition to buildings retained from the former hospital. The QEUH is the regional major trauma centre for the west of Scotland and is also the largest hospital campus in Europe. There is also an emergency telephone service provided by NHS 24 and 24-hour access to general practitioners throughout of hours centres. Paramedic services are provided by the Scottish Ambulance Service and supported by voluntary bodies like the St Andrews Ambulance Association. A strong teaching tradition is maintained between the city's main hospitals and the University of Glasgow Medical School. All pharmacies provide a wide range of services including minor ailment advice, emergency hormonal contraception, public health advice, some provide oxygen and needle exchange. There are private clinics and hospitals at the Nuffield in the West End and Ross Hall in the south side of the city. Education. <inaudible> 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 Glasgow is a major centre of higher and academic research, with the following universities and colleges within 10 miles 16 km of the city centre University of Glasgow University of Strathclyde Glasgow Caledonian University University of the West of Scotland The Glasgow School of Art Royal Conservatoire of Scotland City of Glasgow College Glasgow Clyde College Glasgow Kelvin College West College Scotland In 2011 Glasgow had 53,470 full-time students aged 18 to 74 resident in the city during term time, more than any other city in Scotland and the fifth largest in the United Kingdom outside London. The majority of those who live away from home reside in Shawlands, Dennistown and the west end of the city. The City Council operates 29 secondary schools, 149 primary schools and three specialist schools, the Dance School of Scotland, Glasgow School of Sport and the Glasgow Gaelic School the only secondary school in Scotland to teach exclusively in Gaelic. Outdoor education facilities are provided by the City Council at the Blairvaditch Centre, near Hellingsburg. Jordanhill School is operated directly by the Scottish Government. Glasgow also has a number of independent schools, including Hutchison's Grammar School founded in 1639 and one of the oldest school institutions in Britain, and others such as Craigholm School, Fernhill School, Glasgow Academy, Kelvinside Academy, St Aloysius College and the High School of Glasgow, which was founded in 1124 and is the oldest school in Scotland. Sport Football The world's first international football match was held in 1872 at the west of Scotland Cricket Club's Hamilton Crescent Ground in the Partick area of the city. The match, between Scotland and England finished 0–0. Glasgow was the first city since joined by Liverpool in 1985, Madrid in 1986, 2014, 2016 and 2018, and Milan in 1994 to have had two football teams in European finals in the same season. In 1967, Celtic competed in the European Cup final with rivals Rangers competing in the Cup Winners' Cup final. Rangers were the first football club from the United Kingdom to reach a European final, doing so in 1961. They have also won more domestic top-tier league titles than any other football club in the world currently 54. Celtic were the first non-Latin club to win the European Cup, under the management of Jock Stein in 1967, before Manchester United the following year. Celtic also went on to reach another European Cup final in 1970, losing to Feyenoord, and also the final of the UEFA Cup in 2003, where they lost an enthralling match which finished 3-2 to Portuguese club Porto. Rangers also reached the final of the same competition in 2008, where they lost to Zenit St. Petersburg of Russia. Hampton Park, which is Scotland's national football stadium, holds the European record for attendance at a football match. 149,547 saw Scotland beat England 3-1 in 1937, in the days before leading British stadia became all seated. Hampton Park has hosted the final of the UEFA Champions League on three occasions, most recently in 2002 and hosted the UEFA Cup final in 2007. 
Celtic Park 60,355 seats is located in the east end of Glasgow, and Ibrox Stadium 50,947 seats on the south side. Glasgow has three professional football clubs, Celtic, Rangers, and Partick Thistle. A fourth, Queen's Park, operate on an amateur basis in the SPFL League 2 and are one of the world's oldest active clubs founded 1867. Prior to this, Glasgow had two other professional teams, Clyde since moved to Cumbernauld and Third Lanark liquidated in 1967, plus four others active in the league in the 19th century, Thistle, Cowlairs, Northern and Lindhouse. There are a number of junior clubs within the city as well, such as Pollock, Maryhill, Benburb, Ashfield, Glasgow Perthshire FC, Shettlestone and Petershill, as well as numerous amateur teams. The history of football in the city, as well as the status of the old firm, attracts many visitors to football matches in the city throughout the season. The Scottish Football Association, the national governing body, and the Scottish Football Museum are based in Glasgow, as are the Scottish Professional Football League, Scottish Junior Football Association and Scottish Amateur Football Association. The Glasgow Cup was a once popular tournament, which was competed for by Rangers, Celtic, Clyde, Partick Thistle and Queen's Park. The competition is now played for by the youth sides of the five teams. Glasgow is also home to six women's football teams. Currently, Glasgow City are the champions of the Scottish Women's Premier League. Other local teams include Glasgow Girls and the women's sections of the men's clubs, Celtic and Rangers play in the top division. <inaudible> <inaudible> Rugby union Glasgow has a professional rugby union club, the Glasgow Warriors, which plays in the European Rugby Champions Cup and Pro 14 alongside teams from Scotland, Ireland, Wales and Italy. The Warriors' current home is Scottsdown Stadium and has been since 2012, previously they played at Firhill Stadium. They have won the Melrose Sevens in both 2014 and 2015 and were also crowned champions of the Pro 12 at the end of the 2014-15 season after beating Irish side Munster in Belfast. In the Scottish League, Glasgow Hawks RFC was formed in 1997 by the merger of two of Glasgow's oldest clubs, Glasgow Academicals and Glasgow High Kelvinside GHK. Despite the merger, the second division teams of Glasgow Academicals and Glasgow High Kelvinside re-entered the Scottish Rugby League in 1998. South of Glasgow, in East Renfrewshire, in the suburb of Gifnock, is based another of Glasgow area's most prominent clubs Glasgow Hutchison's Aloysians RFC GHA. GHA was formed in 2002 with the merger of two of Glasgow's leading clubs at the time, Glasgow Southern RFC and Hutchison's Aloysians RFC. Cartha Queen's Park play at Dumbreck, within the city. Glasgow was also home to one of the oldest rugby clubs in Scotland, West of Scotland FC, which was formed in 1865, and was a founding member of the Scottish Rugby Union. The club was originally based in Partick at Hamilton Crescent but is now based outside of the city, at Burnbray, Milngavy in East Dunbartonshire. Rugby <inaudible> League <inaudible> 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 The Easterhouse Panthers based in the east end of Glasgow are a rugby league team who play in the Rugby League Conference Scotland division. Scottstown Stadium has also hosted many rugby league tournaments, events. <laughs> Ice hockey The city of Glasgow has a number of ice rinks, and a temporary one is set up in George Square in the Christmas period. From 1966 to 1986, the Glasgow Dynamos played at Crossmyloof Ice Rink. Since October 2010 a team called the Glasgow Clan based in the nearby Brayhead Arena in Renfrewshire has played in the Professional Elite Ice Hockey League alongside three other Scottish teams, the Fife Flyers, Dundee Stars and the Edinburgh Capitals. This is the first time that a top-level ice hockey team has represented Glasgow. Topic. Swimming. The Arlington Baths Club is the oldest swimming club in the world, founded in 1870. The club in Arlington Street, in the Woodlands area of the city is still thriving today. It is believed the club's first baths master William Wilson invented water polo at the club. The Arlington inspired other swimming clubs and the Western Baths, which opened in 1876, is also still in existence in nearby Hillhead. 
Most of Glasgow's Victorian and Edwardian municipal pools have been closed or demolished, with the City Council investing in large new leisure centres such as Tollcross, Springburn, Gorbals, Scottstown and Bella Houston. A community group is however hoping to reopen Govanhill Baths, on the city's southside. Basketball <inaudible> 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 Glasgow hosts Scotland's only professional basketball team, the Glasgow Rocks, who compete in the British Basketball League. Previously based in Renfrewshire's Brayhead Arena and the 1,200-seater Kelvin Hall, the team has been based at the Emirates Arena since the 2012-13 season. Other sports Major international sporting arenas include the Kelvin Hall and Scottstown Sports Centre. In 2003 the National Academy for Badminton was completed in Scottstown. In 2003, Glasgow was also given the title of European Capital of Sport. Glasgow is also host to many cricket clubs including Clydesdale Cricket Club who have been title winners for the Scottish Cup many times. This club also acted as a neutral venue for a one-day international match between India and Pakistan in 2007, but due to bad weather it was called off. Smaller sporting facilities include an abundance of outdoor playing fields, as well as golf clubs such as Hags Castle and artificial ski slopes. Between 1998 and 2004, the Scottish Claymore's American football team played some or all of their home games each season at Hampton Park and the venue also hosted World Bowl XI. Glasgow Green and the Gorbals are home to a number of rowing clubs, some with open membership the rest belonging to universities or schools. Historically, rowing races on the River Clyde here attracted huge crowds of spectators to watch regattas in the late 19th century and early 20th century, before football caught the public imagination. Two of Glasgow's rowing clubs separately claim that it was their members who were among the founders of Rangers Football Club. Motorcycle Speedway Racing was first introduced to Glasgow in 1928 and is currently staged at Saracen Park in the north of the city. The home club, Glasgow Tigers, compete in the British Premier League, the second tier of motorcycle speedway in Britain. Glasgow is also one of five places in Scotland that hosts the final of the Scottish Cup of Shinty, better known as the Caminod Cup. This is usually held at Old Island. Once home to numerous shindy clubs, there is now only one senior club in Glasgow, Glasgow Mid-Argyle, as well as two university sides from University of Strathclyde and University of Glasgow. Glasgow bid to host the 2018 Summer Youth Olympics but lost to Buenos Aires in the 4th of July 2013 vote. Glasgow will host the 2018 European Sports Championships along with Berlin, pre-existing hosts of the 2018 European Athletics Championships. Topic: 2014 Commonwealth Games. On 9 November 2007, Glasgow was selected to be the host city of the 2014 Commonwealth Games. The Games were held at a number of existing and newly constructed sporting venues across the city, including a refurbished Hampton Park, Kelvingrove Park, Kelvin Hall, and the SSE Hydro at the SECC. The opening ceremony was held at Celtic Park. 2014 was the third time the Games have been held in Scotland. Major incidents and tragedies The 5th of April 1902-1902 Ibrox disaster 25 spectators died and 500 were injured when a new wooden stand at the stadium collapsed. 1960s, 1970s, several firefighters perished at three separate blazes, the Cheapside Street Whiskey Bond Fire 1960, 19 killed, the James Watt Street Fire 1968, 22 killed, the Colburny Street Fire 1972, 7 killed. The 2nd of January 1971-1971 Ibrox disaster 66 people were killed in a crush, as supporters attempted to vacate the stadium. The 11th of May 2004 Stockline Plastics Factory explosion, the ICL Plastics Factory commonly referred to as Stockline Plastics Factory, in the Woodside district of Glasgow in western Scotland, exploded. Nine people were killed, including two company directors, and 33 injured 15 seriously. The four-story building was largely destroyed. 
The 30th of June 2007 Glasgow Airport terrorist attack on Saturday the 30th of June 2007 at 15:11 BST a green Jeep Cherokee loaded with propane canisters was driven into the glass doors of the Glasgow International Airport terminal and set ablaze. It was the first terrorist attack in Scotland since the Lockerbie bombing in 1988. Security bollards outside prevented the car from entering the terminal. The car's occupants were severely burnt in the ensuing fire and five members of the public suffered minor injuries, some from assisting police constables in arresting the occupants. One occupant later died of his injuries in hospital and the second was convicted of attempted murder through terrorism and interfering with international aerospace and was sentenced to 32 years in custody. A further eight were arrested in connection with the incident, all remanded in custody. The 29th of November 2013 to 2013 Glasgow helicopter crash. Friday, the 29th of November 2013, a Eurocopter EC 135T2 Plus operated by Bond Air Services for Police Scotland fell from the sky and crashed on top of the Clutha Vaults, a pub on the north banks of the River Clyde. Ten people were killed in the incident, all those on the helicopter, and seven on the ground and inside the pub. The reason why the helicopter crashed is still under investigation. The 23rd of May 2014 Glasgow School of Art blaze, a fire tore through the historic and world-renowned Glasgow School of Art Macintosh building, that was designed by Charles Rennie Macintosh. Around a tenth of the structure and 30% of its contents were destroyed, including the prized Macintosh library. There were no deaths but a few were treated for minor smoke inhalation. The Scottish Fire and Rescue were praised for their quick response and plan to effectively tackle the fire. It was later found after a fire investigation that gases inside a projector had overheated and ignited. The 22nd of December 2014 to 2014 Glasgow bin lorry crash. At about 14:30 Greenwich Mean Time, six people were killed and many were seriously injured when a bin lorry careered out of control and collided with pedestrians and a Škoda Octavia private hire car before it stopped outside the Millennium Hotel. It is believed that the lorry driver suffered from heart difficulties but the exact cause is still under investigation. The 29th of December 2014 first Ebola virus case in Scotland Pauline Cafferkey a nurse returning to Glasgow from Kerry Town Treatment Centre Sierra Leone West Africa where she had been a volunteer caring for patients infected with the Ebola virus was taken into isolation after testing positive for the virus. She was not diagnosed before leaving Sierra Leone. Topic. Twin towns and sister cities Glasgow is twinned with various cities. Topic. Partnerships The city is also in a partnership with Alu Topic. Notable people Topic. See also Glasgow Portal Topic References Topic Citations Topic Bibliography Topic External Links Glasgow. Encyclopædia Britannica. 12 11th ed. 1911. Glasgow at Curlie Glasgow City Council Interactive Attractions Map of Central Glasgow The Glasgow Story National Library of Scotland, Scottish Screen Archive Archive films relating to Glasgow.